In this episode, we finally escape Port Clinton and spend a couple of peaceful days in the Duke Island group. Then we head to Australia's sailing mecca, Middle Percy Island, where we check out the iconic cruiser's A-frame and make a visit to the island's homestead. And in our galley, Karen whips up a beautiful Mediterranean-inspired mackerel dish in just minutes. After our uh, more than a little bit bumpy ride up here to Port Clinton, this is our second day sitting at anchor. The wind's still howling and we're in the anchorage. So uh, we will sit here for as long as it takes for things to settle down rather than go out and get uh, or get bashed around again. Not all bad. Karen's been in the uh, in the galley baking again, so I've got some nice pumpkin scones, cream and jam. Some editing to do, some photos to play with. Things aren't too bad on our dream time. Port Clinton is a huge expanse of water at high tide. A lot of that over there is very, very shallow. We're in a channel at the moment. There's chill hanging to the, uh, well, it's kind of hanging to the wind and the incoming current. We've got a full keel, so we will always hang to current more than wind unless the wind is super strong. But Port Clinton continues right up that way for quite a number of miles. So it is an incredibly safe bolt hole in any conditions. I'm aware of people that uh, have sat out cyclones right up the top end of the port there. There's other anchorages on the other side depending on what the conditions are. The entrance is the other side of that headland. So we have come right up and around couple of miles in to make sure that we've got plenty of uh, good protection and away from the swell. How long we'll be here will depend on the wind. June 10th, Wednesday I believe. Is it a Wednesday? Wednesday. <laughs> we've slept in. We have. We... It's past dawn. I like that. We looked at the weather last night and went, no, we're not going tomorrow. And we get up this morning and uh, look at the weather again and it's all changed. Not only that, Rob and Karen on SB Chill had actually already left. So we had the absolute perfect scenario where we could call them up on the radio and say, what's it like outside Port Clinton? And they said, far, far nicer than it has been. So as a result, We've up anchored and we're on our way to Hunter Island. Rob's just clipped on. He's going forward. We need to change the lines over for the pole. We've currently got 15, 16 true. And we are dead downwind, so our Yankee won't actually um, hold by itself in that. So we need to use the pole. Safety first again, Rob is actually hooked on and he'll be changing things over. A nice true wind speed of about 22 knots. About 120 degrees. And a 
rather gentle swell that's just rolling in under the stern. What a beautiful sail today. This is what downwind sailing is all about. Very, very different to last Sunday, that is for sure. The wind is eased right off on the way. We've got about 10, 10, 11 knots. So we're watering along a little bit as we approach the rounding of Cape Townsend. Um, the report from chills that are who are about an hour, hour and a half ahead of us that the wind piped up again once they went to the north and that we can maybe expect uh, up to 20 again. So that won't, won't disappoint us because the downwind with this amount of swell, our dream time will love that and we're very keen to get into Thunder Island with as much daylight as possible. Chill, chill, this is our dream time. Uh, this is chill, ready your ladder please. Uh, so we've got a, been able to get a little bit of uh, service on the iPad and looking at tonight's forecast for Hunter, they're talking 15, 16 knots from the south, not the southeast, over. Yeah, I just seen that as well. Uh, from about midnight, maybe a bit later on, we'll start getting a Yeah, we are seriously considering the anchorage on the north side of Marble. We have been there before, it was a little rolly, but it's quite safe and secure. Though. Yeah, I had a look, you mentioned that, so I was hoping you knew a spot. Now, to be honest, I've been there before, but I haven't seen any new spot. Now, to be honest, we've got a couple of marks that people have left um, towards the eastern end of the island, I'll look at it, over. Yeah, it's on the north side, there's, um, there's two bays around there. Okay, uh, we're just passing Danger Island, uh, south of Marble, but we might, I'll have a look, we'll either go around the east side or up through the channel and get to the north shore of Marble, I think, over. Yeah, roger that. Our anchorage here on Marble Island is actually been fantastic. We stayed here a couple of years ago and it was a little bit rolly on that occasion. But we've had 20 knots of southeasters over the last couple of days. We've got a very small swell coming into the bay. The sun hasn't been up too long. It really is a beautiful spot. It's a pastoral lease and uh, we've had cows wandering around as well as uh, deer. The only downside of it is that we can't actually go onto the island proper. We're restricted to the beaches to the high water mark. It is private lease and as they explain with the deer they, uh, they do some shooting so they don't exactly want tourists wandering around uncontrolled and getting in the way of, uh, of something high speed and nasty. But it has been a great spot. Good morning, Thursday Sound. This is our dream time. It's like the log on. We have just up anchored and we're leaving Marble Island, heading to West Bay at Middle Percy Island. Over. Okay, from here, Towel. Now I was stepping out here to say there's Middle Percy Island coming up. The wind's just now come up with a decent wind angle believe it or not because it has been really up our tail and only about six or eight knots so we've been motor sailing across and now that it's channeling down between Middle Percy and South Percy Island we've got a bit of decent wind. But uh, 
We're not too far out of uh, West Bay at Middle Percy now. So I reckon it's time I went back on the wheel and started earning the keep. Not a bad fish, Rita. No, it's a good one, huh? A few meals out of this one. Yeah! And how good is West Bay at Middle Percy Island? It looks funny, isn't it? We were concerned that it could be uh, fairly rolly in here, but there's just a tiny bit of swell entering the bay, not enough to worry us at all. It does have a reputation of being, uh, well, Alan Lucas in his guidebook describes it as abysmal. Over there on the beach is the internationally famous uh, cruiser's A-frame. Not sure how long we'll stay. Day, two, three, who knows? We'll work it out. We've got fish to eat. The internationally famous Pursley Island Yacht Club. A real must-do mecca for uh, Australian cruisers and have a look at the memorabilia everybody wants to leave their mark on this place there's no camping allowed here but guess what nothing like a bit of a, uh, a day relax First time we came here there was an open fire with a kind of an A-frame and they hung a pot from it. Now uh, we've got a bit of a barbecue structure etc but the gate stews still happen. Been many a uh, cruiser's dinner held around these tables. And yes it's even multi-level. Going up. That's a view across to uh, Digby Island and beyond that Mackay on the mainland. Really is a piece of paradise here. the mountain here at uh, Middle Percy Island to get some phone reception so that we can get a weather forecast and I've discovered uh, three of the locals black and white goats plenty of uh, goats on the island they are maintained by the leaseholder in manageable numbers hence quite often down at the A-frame cruisers will be in there having uh, a very enjoyable goat stew <sighs> So I walk up the hill, achieved getting weather, it's all about finding some phone service so you can find the weather. What it did is tell us that there's some strong winds coming next week. So we're going to have a lovely day here at uh, West Bay, Middle Percy Island tomorrow and then it's going to be time to bug out and find the, a nice, nice safe bolt hole of some pretty strong south easterlies blow through. This is beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Yeah, low tide, it's completely dry through this channel. Massive tides here around the Mackay area. And you'd be amazed at the size of boats that do come through this little channel on a high tide and get on the inside for careening. The tide goes out, they're up high and dry, leaning against the pylons. 
tide he'll be sitting in the sand the water is crystal clear here a couple of years ago we brought our uh, grandson here at nine years of age he was having his first stop we started right here and it's uh, in the harbour because the water is so crystal clear and we we're able to snorkel amongst the mangroves which was a real interesting experience it was really cool here we have another trimaran tucked away. This Karen does a 360. <laughs> so you can see, it doesn't matter what blew through, you'd be nice and safe in here. Unless you're a monohull like us, it's just going to fall over at low tide. We're heading off up the walk to the homestead today. Yeah, we're going to go up the hill to the middle of Middle Percy. <laughs> middle of middle Percy. So from, from the west to the middle. There you go. There you go. Sometimes it's all about timing and on this day ours was perfect. When we got to the beach we were offered a lift up to the homestead in the back of the island ute. family lived here for many years and Henry Evans White is buried here 1944 it's also a plaque in uh, memory of the Armitage family lost at sea between Mackay and Percy Island in 1938 beautiful organic garden just the way they should be for it. Definitely have to try and be self-sufficient when you live on an island like Middle Percy. Custard apple, absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Karen filling in some uh, info about her previous visits here in the visitor's book. I think I'm writing a book itself. <laughs> We're at the homestead at Middle Percy Island. What an amazing experience to be here once again and to meet Kate 
luscious gardens that she has and such a great history here. Look at this. Who has passion fruit growing and it's a tree here? It's just amazing. When you get to the last of your fresh provisions, creativity is the only ingredient you need. Tonight, we of course have beautiful fresh mackerel fillets. Adding some olive oil and butter to the medium pan. At this stage, I add some dry Italian herbs and saute the onions, Brussels sprouts, and some salami for a bit of extra spice. Once the onion has cooked clear, I add the half cherry tomatoes and some sliced capsicum. Once warmed through, I add the sliced cabbage. Push all the vegetables to one side and add a little bit more butter. Now add your fish, the skin side down. I like to put the skin side down first. In four minutes, turn your fish over. Add a teaspoon of capers and a good sprinkle of sea salt flakes and a good grind of pepper. Cook the fish for a further four minutes. Serve your vegetables with the fish placed on top. Don't forget a good squeeze of lemon will bring all your flavours together. A great healthy meal in no time. Sit back and enjoy. If you're enjoying our videos, please make sure you give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. It really does help us with YouTube to reach more people. If you also hit the bell button, you'll be notified each time we release a new episode. Come sail with us again soon.